everyone, so for those of you who have been reading my blog or who know me in real life, you'll know that I am a big fan of books. I absolutely love reading and I have a pretty varied taste in what I like. I love most types of fiction and non-fiction as well. I read a lot of science and nature books, I read a lot of psychology, I read a lot of biography and memoirs, I read true crime, I read crime fiction, um, I read a few kind of mushy girly books, I like my contemporary fiction as well as a lot of classics. So there's a lot of stuff I like to read and today I just want to talk to you a little bit about some of the books I read throughout February. So some of these are at the end of being my favourites that I read throughout the month and one of them that I'm going to talk about was one of my least favourites that I wasn't really a fan of. So to start up I'm going to talk about Written in Blood by Mike Silverman. So this is a non-fiction book by one of the UK's leading forensic scientists, you know, Mike Silverman as you can guess, and it's really really great. It starts with him beginning his career in I think around the 70s or something like that when, you know, most forensic techniques were things like just sort of fingerprinting and basic blood typing and, um, you know, figuring out is this type A, type B and things like that. Um, is this human blood or is this animal blood and that sort of thing. And it was all fairly basic. And then it kind of goes on to talk about um, other forensic techniques such as blood splatter techniques and also then DNA profiling and how that developed and the pros and cons of it and you know some of the problems that have arisen um, which is really really interesting. So he does look at a lot of crime cases that he's worked on and it can get a little bit gruesome at times but it's still really really interesting. As someone who was at one point looking at going into kind of like forensics or forensic anthropology or something like that it's really really interesting to me and I really find it um, it's very informative. It reminded me a lot of Val McDermott's Forensics, which takes a look at forensic techniques used in solving crimes from, you know, right early from like the Victorian era to today. But this kind of like takes a little bit more of an in-depth look at the more recent techniques and the more scientific based techniques. At times he does go into like a lot of detail, like describing how the techniques are carried out and the processes and things like that, which I really enjoyed because some of them are sort of techniques that I've done in a lab when I was at uni or things like that, so I found it really interesting. But for someone who doesn't really have that science background, it can maybe get a little bit much at times. But overall, I really, really enjoyed the book. It did start to get a little bit kind of political towards the last part, um, talking about sort of office politics and the sort of forensic industry in general and talking about sort of like privatisation and things like that. So it did get a little bit heavy in that sense and sort of moved away from the science a bit. So the latter kind of third of the book was a little bit less enjoyable for me than the first part but overall I really really liked it and I would probably give this a 9 out of 10. I think that's what I gave it on my blog and, and like I say would really really recommend it to anyone who's a fan of science and forensics, a fan of true crime, and um, just a kind of fan of memoirs in general. Um, really, really good book. Next up, I want to talk about a book that I read very recently and got from the library called Reconstructing Amelia by Kimberly McCrate? McCrate? Yeah, Kimberly McCrate, I think. I'm not very good at like pronouncing names, but there we go. So this is a fiction book about a woman who, she's a single mum, a successful lawyer, and she basically gets a call from her daughter's school one day to say that her daughter has, you know, got in trouble and when she gets there she finds that her daughter's dead. And it's a little bit unclear at first whether it's a suicide or whether it was kind of like done intentionally or whether it was an accident. And at first the police are very kind of like certain, like it was a suicide, that's it, case closed. But then the mother starts receiving kind of anonymous text messages and it starts to be a little bit more uncertain about what actually happened. So I really like how this story is told because it's not just from the mother's perspective but it kind of flips backwards and forwards from um, the daughter Amelia, her kind of diary entries or her perspective um, from what was happening kind of in the weeks leading up to the incident to the mother's side of the story of what's happening now and afterwards and as she basically does try to reconstruct her daughter's lives and then interspersed with that there are things like 
Facebook posts, text messages, emails, that sort of thing. So we get a real insight into her life and, you know, blog posts, things like that. So I really liked how the story was told as well. Um, it was really interesting and I did feel really sort of like engaged with the characters, which I liked. It was one of these books that the whole way through I was really, really enjoying and then kind of felt that my whole kind of perspective on the book would be kind of altered by what the outcome was. Like, I was really, really hoping it would be a good ending, and in the end I did think it was. There was a slight twist, which was really good, and I really liked it, and I thought it ended in a really, really good way. And again, I would really recommend this book. Probably an 8 out of 10, something like that. Um, and yeah, for anyone who's a fan of kind of like crime fiction, thrillers, or even just kind of like family dramas and that type of thing, really really would recommend this one. Another book I want to talk about is Little Black Lies by Sharon Bolton. Now Sharon Bolton was also kind of known at the start of her career as S.J. Bolton and she is one of my favourite authors. I really really like her. She's mostly known for stuff like crime thrillers and things like that set around the UK. Although this one is set on the Falkland Islands so it's like a little bit different from some of her other stuff but I still really enjoyed it. At the start I wasn't really as drawn into this book as I was with a lot of her others. It took me a while to kind of get into it and start enjoying it. The premise is really interesting. It centres mostly around this woman Catherine and her best friend Rachel and they grow up together on this island. They're pretty much inseparable until one day Rachel causes this like horrific accident which causes uh, Catherine's two sons to die. And so the story centres mostly around her sort of trying to get over that um, even as the years kind of pass by. But also other boys start disappearing on the island and you know it's it feels a little bit muddled because at first I wasn't really sure where the story was going, what it was centred on, um, what was really happening. It just felt a little bit um, all over the place. Then as the book goes on you kind of start to see a more of a kind of straightforward plot I guess. So it's split up into three parts. The first part is narrated by Catherine, the second part is narrated by another guy on the island, Callum, who it turns out Catherine was having this affair with, and then the third part is narrated by Rachel. And in the end they all kind of end up admitting to the same crime that it, it's just it's a little bit odd, and um, the ending's a little bit unsatisfying. You never... I mean, you do kind of learn what's happened to each of the missing kids, but at the same time there's never really too much of an obvious, satisfying explanation. Catherine starts out being quite unlikable, but by the end of the book I really liked her. Rachel is kind of like thrown in your face as like being this horrible evil woman but then I think you're supposed to kind of pity her by the end of it and like her but I just didn't like her at all. And then, I don't know, Callum seemed like this really nice decent guy who just got sort of caught up in this awful mess and I, I don't know. It was a strange book. I definitely didn't kind of get into it as quickly as, as her other books. It's not quite as sort of scary and thrilling as some of her others. It's not as satisfying as some of her others, but, you know, in terms of being a decent sort of crime thriller type book, it's okay, you know, it's not bad. I'd maybe give it like 6 or 7 stars out of 10. Like, it's alright. If someone said, do you have a book to recommend me, this probably wouldn't be my first choice to give them, but if they've enjoyed other Sharon Bolton books, then yeah, it's worth a go, you know what I mean? Last up, I want to talk about a book that I was very, very excited to read for quite a long time and I had very high expectations for, which is Dear Amy by Helen Callahan. So the premise of this is that um, Margot Lewis is a school teacher and in her spare time she writes the advice column for a local newspaper called Dear Amy. And one day, just kind of out of the blue, she starts getting kind of like these letters from this girl who disappeared like 20 years earlier saying hi, um, I've been kidnapped, I'm being held captive, can you help me? And at the same time this other schoolgirl has gone missing as well and people kind of presume she's run away but we learn in the beginning that she was actually kidnapped by this guy and you know it's a bit kind of like who's writing these letters, what's happening, are these two kind of like kidnappings connected in any way and this sort of thing and why is this random woman receiving the letters. But overall I found Margot as a character kind of a bit, bit annoying, a bit pretentious. Um, I didn't really like her, I didn't like her backstory, it was always kind of like... Like the reader was supposed to pity her and feel sorry for her, um, 
but I kind of didn't and I didn't really like who she was as a character or as a narrator. The twist I found pretty unbelievable. I didn't really like it and then after that the ending was just sort of predictable and straightforward. The whole kind of writing in the book was sort of unnecessarily flowery and again kind of pretentious in places. It didn't quite give enough away at the right times and it didn't quite hold back when it maybe should have. To be honest, this is her first book and you can kind of see that because the writing's trying to be sort of more sophisticated than it has to be and more sophisticated than she's kind of able to write, if you know what I mean. I feel like if she's going to write this style of book for this type of audience, you know, she should be fine with kind of making it a little bit more simple and straightforward and easy to understand. If she wants to write this kind of flowery, kind of overly descriptive, you know, trying to be sophisticated sort of thing, she either needs to change her, well, she needs to change her audience and get better at it because at the minute it just makes it a little bit kind of like difficult to read and just it doesn't add anything to it to be honest but at the minute I don't think I got I want to read another one of her books like I say this story had so much promise and I just don't quite think it delivered that said I think there's definitely an audience out there for this and people who will like it but it just wasn't really for me and I didn't really enjoy it which was really really sad to be honest because I really wanted to. Overall I'd probably give this like a 3 out of 10. Other than that, quick mention for some other books I did read in February that I did enjoy. Um, they are Baby Doll by Holly Overton. That's had a little bit of criticism because it's kind of been promoted as a new Gone Girl or another version of Room by Emma Donoghue. But while the premise is kind of the same as that, it's definitely not a thriller. It's more of a kind of like emotional drama about what happens after someone has been kind of like, you know, kidnapped and, you know, basically assaulted and tortured for years and it's how her and her family cope with that afterwards and it is a kind of emotional family drama type thing. So if you go into it with that perspective rather than being another Gone Girl or another Room, it's definitely a good book and I did enjoy it. Another book I read that I really enjoyed was I Own You by Dawn McConnell, which is a memoir slash biography type thing and it's very sad, it's very intense at times. It's about a woman who was abused from a young age and then got into a relationship with a man who abused her again when she was very young and this carried on throughout her life. And then at the end, you know, she manages to break away, she has this amazing successful career, she kind of fights back and she makes this amazing life for herself and it's very very inspiring in that respect. Other than that, um, another one I recommend is Rob Ryan's A Sky Full of Kindness, which is a really cute kind of graphic novel, um, except all the kind of images in the story is all kind of like cut out paper and it's about this little bird who basically goes on this adventure because she's going to be a mother and she kind of wants to figure out her life for herself and you know, she's worried about all this evil in the world and bringing her little little egg baby into that. And she goes out there and finds out that, you know, the world is full of kind people and it's just a really lovely, sweet, kind of inspiring book and it's absolutely beautiful as well. So I would thoroughly recommend that to anyone and everyone. Okay, so there we go. That is pretty much my roundup of my favourite and least favourite books that I read through February. There are a couple of others that I read that kind of didn't stick with me enough to want to mention, <laughs> but I'm sure they're out there. Uh, you can check out my Goodreads if you want to find out what they were. I will leave a link in the description below. Other than that, let me know what you were reading throughout February. Let me know what you thought if you've read any of these books. Um, and if you like this video, please give it a little thumbs up because I would really appreciate it. Um, but for now, thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.